hello and welcome back and it's just a quick one today because today I want to do another comparison but this time I want to talk about upgrade cards now for those of you that aren't aware Synology has released a few very interesting PCIe cards of late today I want to talk about the M2D 20 this is their brand new NVMe SSD upgrade card now I say it's new it's not the first time they've done this and in fact the M2D18 has been around for about two years, give or take. These two cards are ways in which you can improve the internal performance of your storage system. So you have a NAS that's filled with hard drives, and those hard drives can run at a certain speed. And though you've got them in the right RAID and you're getting a good bit of performance internally, it's not quite enough. And you can't really budget the big pile of SSD. You can't really go ahead and just fill out your NAS with, uh, with SATA based SSD so easily because it costs so much and the capacities are so low. So one of the ways in which you can get around it is utilizing SSD caching. That is um, utilizing and leveraging the speed that the non-mechanical and cell based nature of SSDs bring to the table and use a small amount of SSD as a kind of hybrid storage system in a way to help with buffering and caching of the storage array. It's way, way cheaper than buying a whole new hard drive storage array, but with the added bonus as well that these internal speeds are very much tailored with the IOPS portion of SSD. So you're not paying the horrible price of trying to fully populate an NAS with SSDs, relying on you know cost-effective hard drive with bigger available capacities, but with more frequent access to files, with um, actions that have got simultaneous actions where the system needs a lovely little playground sandbox buffer area or it can work with, that's where these cards live. And if you are looking at a Synology NAS that's got a PCIe upgrade slot, then chances are one of the ways in which you've thought about improving your performance on that NAS over the years has been cache cards. Indeed, Synology has really gone all in with SSD caching on their newer generation of NAS. Almost all of the new disk stations have NVMe SSD bays built into them and all of the newer generation uh, rack station and more business level disk station devices have got PCIe upgrade slots to include these cards. You can use SATA SSDs but you won't get the true performance benefits outside of NVMe. In fact we did uh, a SATA versus NVMe comparison which I hope is live by the time of this video where it did show a noticeable percentage increase where the system was able to take advantage of the NVMe bays. Now of course the storage of your hard drives will always play their part and the number of hard drives you've got will just mean that is the base level you're starting with. You can't utilize the NVMEs on these for raw storage. I know there's some people that have knocked around on GitHub and knocked together some containers that allow you to use the NVMEs for storage, but as soon as you upgrade your DSM or even just restart the NAS, you have to manually action that to happen which can destabilize your storage, so maybe don't try that. But which one of these two cards should you buy after this exceptionally long intro? It's a very interesting question because although both of them are touted as NVMe upgrade cards for your system and they both support two NVMe SSDs and largely the same NVMe SSDs, there's actually a vast amount of difference between them. Not just the price, which is about 20 to 30 quid, depending on where you shop around, but on top of that, what you get for your money is actually significantly different now i've done a different version of this video uh for span tv the reason being that one was more about people that are going into nas and looking at an upgrade and they've considered buying the old card versus the new this is i'm just gonna lay my cards real flat with this video i'm telling you don't bother with the old card in this video because the old card is good it's a good product but the whole point of devices like this is about lifting that glass ceiling. It's about longevity. And right now, there is more future-proofing in the new card than there is in the old. So do bear that in mind. So why should a person go for the old card? Well, if we look at these cards, first thing we should look at is simple heat sink. These devices get hot. NVMe SSDs have that enormous amount of storage uh, potential. Uh, and caching potential but also speed and that speed generates heat even early generation nvmes that really broke ground like the 960 series from samsung they those drives were still reporting 1800 to 2000 megabytes per second performance the latest generation like the seagate iron wolves there these um, uh, pcie gen 3 times 4 you're looking at two and a half to three and a half thousand easy and if you are using um, smaller file operations, you can get it even higher than that. So you want to make sure that the cards you're putting them in 
is going to get that kind of a throughput. And that's one of the first big differences between these, because not only is that issue of heat um, something to discuss, where we can see the older generation has got that Synology heat sink there, and there's little heat sinks panels, heat sink panels that you can attach to the card one by one in little brackets there, and they arrive in little heat sinks, one for each of them. But the end of the card there is just flat there. There's no ventilation there, and when the card's in your system, it's still going to work, and it's still going to work damn well, but that card has not got any kind of passive airflow. It's going to rely on the NAS there, which is something they've addressed in the newer gen, because the newer generation has got ventilation on both this and the full um, height bracket. But on top of that, the heatsink is huge. That heatsink sits on there with uh, spring-loaded screws there and goes straight into there, and there you end up with a card with a full length heat sink. Full length heat sink there all the way along and that ventilation there. Now, with all that heat being generated, yes, they've got the heat sinks pre-included. Um, sorry, the uh, little tiny mat things that, that you put on there acting as kind of what you put on the CPU there with your silicon paste. And they go on each of the NVMEs. And if you look at the base of the heat sink, it even directs you which ones to put on there. But carrying on with that subject of performance and heat, the other reason that this is going to give you a great level of performance there is because the older generation card is PCIe Gen 2 times 8. The newer generation card is PCIe Gen 3 times 8. So Gen 2, Gen 3. The difference there is this card with that PCIe connection has a potential 4,000 megabytes per second throughput. And remember, the NVMEs are sharing that throughput via the PCIe connected to your system. The newer generation card is going to be sharing 8,000 megabytes per second. And that's important. The reason being that those newer gen NVMEs that are putting out, you know, between 18 and 3,000 on average, depending on which gen you go for in terms of read and write. If you are utilizing this card, both in terms of read and write and both of those um, internally, that means you're leveraging 1,000 read, 1,000 write, 1,000 read, 1,000 write. And that's if you were using all of the max. Obviously, the system won't do that. Depending on the cache system you go for, it's actually going to move in between that. So you might be using read cache and it'll just open it all up to read. But based on the operation you're running, it can present maxing out of that PCIe. Now, I can see why they went for that PCIe gen, because that gen is more supported by a number of the older generation NAS that came before it. And this is an upgrade card, which generally will be utilized in a NAS that's already been around for a year or two. It's to heighten that glass ceiling. But the newer generation NAS uh, card that's going to arrive with that 8,000 megabytes per second means if you are full out both channeling read and write on both of those NVMEs, you've still got 2,000 each way available to you thanks to that 8,000 megabytes per second PCIe. And bear in mind that although this card is supported generally by less NAS systems than the older device because of that newer generation PCIe, pretty much all of the NASes that have come out from Synology with PCIe slots in the last few years have all been PCIe Gen 3. Sometimes 4, sometimes 8, but predominantly all of them are going to be supported by this card. So do check out your compatibility list before proceeding but I will say that this card is better supported by newer generation NAS than the older one. Now, other differences you may have already spotted. The NVMe bays. The older generation card supports up to the 2280 length of NVMe's, which is fine. You can still get 4TB NVMe's at that length, even 8TB NVMe's at that length with um, quad layer NAND uh, knocking around, which again, lowers the performance but gives you a better price per capacity as well and just sheer amount of storage potential but the newer generation card support 22110 length NVMEs which are longer and therefore either give you even more storage potential in those NVMEs or you can get more of the standard capacities at 4TB or maybe even 8TB coming soon but using TLC NAND uh, maybe even MLC but I doubt that so 3D TLC NAND probably all the way on this like those Seagate Ironwolves. So it's faster storage and a better value for storage as well combined together. Now, the last difference between them is worth highlighting is of course the warranty. The older generation card arrives with three years of warranty and the newer generation with five years of warranty. The result being two years more coverage, which 
is going to be useful. And again, the whole point of this is about future proofing. It's about longevity. It's about having that cover. That's why there's warranty extensions and stuff like that. The reason you're upgrading part of your NAS is you're trying to utilize the same NAS with the same connection to same drives, same shared folders, the same users, but you want to improve those internal operations. And that's where that card lives. So obviously you're going to go with a card that gives you more for your money and more longevity. And that's why, although this is a comparison between the M2D18 and the M2D20, let's be honest, this is just a better card. And unless you see that card at a decent enough discount over there, I would recommend the newer generation card every single time. It's just a better card overall. And obviously it's been released a few years later and the way technology moves forward, you would expect it to be that. But this has been comparing the SSD cash cards from Synology. Do let me know what you think. There should be a link in the description to NAS Compares to tell you more about this. But of course, click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. And I'll see you next time.